Should you shoot a closed aperture or should you shoot a wide open aperture? Which of these apertures or f-stops gives you the best results for your pictures? Before we dive into this video, please take a minute, subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up and of course, leave comments below of what exactly has resonated with you. This video is going to address everything, every question you've ever asked about apertures and f-stops. You're going to know the right aperture or the right f-stop to use in your next photo shoot. And when should you use these different apertures? It is something that perturbed me as a beginner photographer. Now, for the first setup, I'm going to use the aperture 1.8. Then the second portrait, I'm also going to use now the aperture of 2.8. Then I'm going to transition to another aperture of 5.6 all the way to 9. After that, we're going to compare all the shots. Then after that, I'll show you which aperture is best for what kind of situation. Great. Let's dive into this already. Now, for this particular setup, I'm shooting with the uh, Godox SL 150 Mark II. That is the one I'm shooting with, and I'm bouncing it off this white ceiling here. For the camera, I'm using a Canon 5DSR. This is a 50 megapixel camera. Gives you very, very awesome resolutions. And for the lens, I'm using an 85 millimeter. So the widest it can open is a, a 1.8. And I'm going to shoot this beautiful lady here, Saida Cruz. Actually, you can follow her on her Instagram. She's also an excellent portrait photographer. You could check out some of her work on her Instagram page. I'll leave the links to her Instagram in the description just right here below so that you can go and give her a follow. So let us dive into this. Now, we don't have a proper reflector, but as you know, anything white can work. So we're going to use this, uh, is it a foam board? It is from my microwave box that I bought recently. So it is going to help us act as a reflector so that we fill in some of the shadows. Yeah. Okay, then you look back this way. I just tilt it back. Okay, here we go. This is, okay, keep it there. Just going to, let me just put the white balance right because the white balance doesn't seem to be quite white. So I'll just come and uh, okay, raise the shutter speed a bit then. Remember, we are only looking at aperture, okay? So I get focus on the eye and then, nice. We go, another one. Good, give it there. Okay, now the next shot, I'm going to shoot it at 2.8, okay? So let us get it at 2.8. Okay, here you go. Nice, another one, smile here. Beautiful, keep it there. Very lovely. Okay, that is 2.8. Um, um, in order to compensate for the brightness, I'm going to still have to reduce the shutter speed a bit down so that I compensate for the lost light. Okay, so let us do this again. This is nice. Keep it there. Very beautiful. So the next aperture I'm going to shoot at is going to be 5.6, okay? So I'll put the camera at 5.6 right here. So in order to compensate for the lost light, I'm going to just have to put the shutter speeds a bit down to 80. Then I'll keep the ISOs to maybe 1000 or something. Then I'll come here and then, nice. Right there, hold it there, focus on the eyes. Beautiful, keep it there. And finally, so now the next aperture I'm now going to shoot at is going to be nine, okay? Let's go, nine. Then to compensate, I'll have to increase the ISO again to around uh, probably 2000 or 2500. Then I'll just come and shoot at nine as well. Smile back here, beautiful. Hold it there and one more. So we are also going to try out this particular setup in an outdoor scene so that you get the feel of the whole thing. Okay, let's get there. So I just want you to see the effect of what the 1.8 gives you. We're going to zoom in and look at the details, including the background as well. Okay, now let's go. Nice, keep it there. Go. One more. Now. 
the next shot we are going to do this at uh, 5.6 still so that you get the difference something uh -huh, shutter speed so you see there we go focus on the eye another one and give it there and perfect so the next shot so the next shot we're now going to do this at uh, 9.0 okay so in order to compensate for the lost light i'll have to increase the iso here so here we go nice we go hold it there keep it there and let me shoot it in landscape so let me let me try taking it extreme i'm taking it to the maximum closed aperture that is f22 so i'll just have to compensate this with uh, at least increasing the iso so that you get the difference so here we go uh-huh nice hold it there one more and now this is a side-by-side -side look of all the images shot in different f-stops now let us look at these images this image one is shot at f f 1.8 this is shot at f5 1.5 this this one is shot at f 5.6 this one is shot at f 9.0 and this is shot at f 9.2 when you look at all these images they have one major difference among all of them the difference is in how blurry the background is okay i know many photographers love images that look with this blurry creamy kind of background am i right and this is probably your most beautiful image right now the problem with this image is that when we zoom it in it has focus in the eyes but however when you look onto the skin tones the skin tones have been blurred out and when you look at the edges as well the edges are blurry look at the ear the ears look at the hair you know the hair edges they're all blurred out look at the way the shirt is all blurred out. Now, this is the major problem I usually have with this wide open aperture in that you're supposed to be very, very, very careful with how you pick your focus. If you miss the focus on the eyes, the whole image turns out to be dead. Now, this brings us to the one of F5.6. Now, this one is fairly good, but still... I'm not seeing those pores as crisp as I want them. Yes, I have the focus on the eyes. I don't know how good the screen is showing them, but I don't. I still see that haziness on the skin. Now, when we get to this one, f.9, now, this is my favorite f-stop. Now, with this particular f-stop, you're going to realize we have focus on the eyes. We have more details in the skin, and the background is actually blurry, not as blurry as the one of... Uh, f1.8 but blurry in a reasonable way in that it is creating a bit of depth somehow the image is still demarcated off the background now this is what i use mostly when i'm doing my portrait and high-end images because this is what brings out the details it's the same kind of f-stop i use when i'm shooting commercial pictures because in case i have to do any compositing any post-production i'm really safe when i'm trimming out these images because i have details in everything it is better off you have more details to work with than having little details to work with so when you look at now the one that is shot at f22 you realize it even shows everything in the background every clutter now the problem with this is that if you have a background that is too cluttered now for example like this background it appears like this column is growing through her hair the same applies to the burglar proofing. It's like it's growing through her, you know, her shoulder line. Now, this is the problem we have with this particular f-stop. So when you're using these f-stops, of course, you're supposed to have those particular certain things into consideration. Watch this video till the end, actually, because I, I go into details into where and when you should use these particular f-stops yes personally when i was starting out i always wanted to have those dark sharp 
crisp images because I used to look at those fashion high-end fashion magazines and the pictures were all sharp and crisp. The problem was I sucked at retouching so I had tack sharp detailed images but the quality was downgraded due to bad editing. Later on I realized retouching and photo editing was meant to add value to an already detailed image. So I took it upon myself to research and master high-end retouching. It took me hundreds of hours trying to figure out the best retouching techniques. Some of the channels of course here wasted my time. Others gave me information but it was in uh, small bits. Through the fluff and hundreds of hours, I finally found the proper frameworks. So today I can shoot any aperture that I want because I know exactly how to work around any kind of shot. The good news is you don't have to go through the same pain and struggle that I went through and wasting hundreds of hours searching all over the internet for the right frameworks on how to work your images or on how to edit your images. I have put together for you a Retouching Secrets Masterclass to help you step by step on how to edit any image shot at any kind of aperture or any kind of camera. Mastering retouching is the only way you can add value to your images and Retouching Secrets Masterclass is the only class that will get you there. Click the first link in the description below to join the Retouching Masterclass. That is if you want to level up the quality of your photography today. By now you're asking yourself, Oscar, which is the best aperture now? We've seen all the apertures now. Which are the best apertures now? If you struggle with retouching and editing, Apertures between 2.8 and 5.8 are good for you. Reason being, they soften the skin. Very few skin pores will show in your portraits and pictures. However, when you are shooting, make sure the eyes of your subject are in focus. Yes, the eyes are very key because that is the first part that people look at the most when they are looking at a portrait. And this aperture range is also good when you are shooting in situations where the background is not amazing. You know those situations when you're shooting in backgrounds that are really cluttered, backgrounds that look very clumsy. Now, this is a very, very good way of blurring out the backgrounds with such apertures. These help to blur out the background so that they become, you know, a bit soft. The same aperture range is also good for those of you who struggle with composition and choosing the right backgrounds for your images. Of course, I'm not saying that you shouldn't master composition. Mastering composition is also part of the whole craft as an artist. However, if you're doing any commercial work that may require some bit of manipulation and post-production work, apertures from 7 and above are great because they retain a lot of detail in the whole picture. Just like in these portraits, when you look at the portrait shot in a, with a closed aperture and a wide open aperture, you realize that the closed aperture has more detail. The pores of the skin are more visible as compared to the other picture that was shot on a wide open aperture. Here we don't see any of the skin details. These closed apertures are also a good aperture range if you are great at high-end retouching. So there you have it. You know what aperture to shoot at, when and where. Truth be told, high-end retouching has to be value addition. We all have the same cameras, you have the same lenses. The only way you're going to differentiate yourself from the rest of your competition is by harnessing the power of high-end retouching so that you add that tack, sharp crispness on your, to your images using proper high fashion, high-end retouching techniques. Yes, so depending on the situation, let the story you're trying to tell dictate the kind of aperture you use for your pictures.